Hi, welcome to our uh, special noodle class broadcasting from Yamato MFG headquarter in Kagawa, Japan. And uh, we're talking about miso ramen today. And uh, my name is Akira Mi, and I'm going to be host today. And uh, this is Megumi. Uh, so she's going to be making um, um, ramen noodles like from scratch. And uh, she's actually um, covering uh, customers, like supporting customers like from North America. Um, Primarily, so like if um, you guys are joining us like from North America, um, you, know, you may be interested in talking to a person. And um, before we start uh, talking about ramen noodle, like miso ramen noodles, um, you know, just for those of you like who um, don't know much about us, um, uh, this uh, let me uh, introduce ourselves a little bit. Um, so we have. Uh, we are a manufacturer, 45 year old uh, manufacturer of noodle making machines. Noodle making machines. Uh, and um, still. and uh, we have, uh, like, not only like we manufacture noodle making machines, but we, we've been running, uh, we've been running um, noodle schools, like training courses on ramen and udon and soba. And uh, that that's like we have a school in Tokyo and here in Kagawa, and we also have a school in Singapore. And um, we have uh, customers using our machines in 61 countries, and uh, we have uh, offices in uh, South Korea, uh, Singapore, outside Japan, like Netherlands, USA, and we have like different um, parts of the world, like in different. Um, partners like distributors in different parts of the world. So if um, you're interested in working with us, um, feel free to like contact us for more details. And so we are basically a group of experts, noodle making experts like who, can, who help um, you know, our customers develop uh, unique products um, and uh, help um, build successful noodle restaurants, noodle businesses. And that's that's what we do. So um, if if you're interested in like, um, you know, talking to us, I, like starting up like some noodle businesses, uh, restaurants, uh, just feel free to uh, contact us uh, later. So uh, we're talking about um, miso ramen today. And uh, so today's agenda is like, so before we talk about what miso ramen is even, um, you know, I, I think we should talk about what, what miso is, like for those of you like who are not really familiar with it. And um, we're gonna talk about what kinds of noodles that are suitable for miso ramen. And uh, we're talking about ingredients and noodle making processes. And um, um, yeah, you know, as, as, I, as I said, like Megumi is gonna make uh, miso ramen noodles like from scratch in a ramen machine. And we have uh, we have a school instructor in our kitchen. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, go there later, and he's gonna show us a few examples of uh, miso ramen dishes. And uh, we're gonna finish it off like with the FAQ sessions. So if you have any questions during the course, um, just feel free to um, yeah send us uh, some questions in the comments. Okay, so uh, before we start talking about Miss Ramen, um, so like I just want to just uh, touch a little bit of like um, like what ramen is like ramen. So you know, ramen is like being rapidly like growing across the world. And even though it has like only like hundred years of like history, um, it's been like evol evolving fast in Japan. And every year, like we see like something new, uh, some like new types of ramen um, emerging in the market, like industry. And the ramen is like very, I mean, highly customizable. And it's like, you know, noodles, uh, soups, toppings, they're all like, uh, you know, you can make them like really, you can develop like different, like very uniquely, and you can combine them on differently to, um, you know, make your uh, bowl ramen like very, very unique. And ramen has like something that like drives people crazy. So like it's um, people, just, you know, like just keep going back to this uh, ramen shop, like, you know, every like three three times a week. And like, um, 
So that's that's something that's been like that's one of the sources that's been like kind of like driving ramen as top Japanese cuisine. So if you know it's like it's your first time like learning about ramen, um, you know it may be like a good time for you to start like thinking about um, learning more about ramen and ramen businesses. Uh, okay, so what's what's miso, right? Um, so before we talk about like a miso ramen. Um, so, like, I think we should like touch a little bit about a little bit on like what miso is, and there are many types of miso like produced in different regions in Japan. Um, they can be categorized by the ingredients, uh, taste like sweet and salty, and some color. Um, there's like red, white, etc. Um, so miso is, is like a very familiar seasoning to Japanese. It's got a history of like 1,300 years. And many Japanese like grow up in you know, a drinking bowl of miso soup with a steamed rice for breakfast every day. That's kind of, that's a bit old fashioned, but miso is widely used in Japanese cuisines. And it's, it's even hard like not to like encounter any food um, that don't use miso on a daily basis. Uh, miso is fermented food seasoning that's made from such grains as rice, soybeans, and barley. The grains are fermented by adding molds and salt to them. So fermentation helps break down protein of the grains and release the taste, such as like sweetness from rice, I mean acid like uh, or umami from soybeans. Uh, so depending on the ingredients used, there are many variations of miso. 80% of miso produced in Japan is like rice miso, which is made of rice, barley, and salt. Other types of miso are barley miso, which is made of like soybeans with barley malt and salt. Bean miso, which is made of like soybeans, salt, and mixed miso, which makes a few types of these miso. So miso is said to have like several health benefits and fermentation makes soybeans nutrients easier to be absorbed. Depending on type of miso, uh, it's packed with protein, carbohydrates, various vitamins, minerals, isoflavone, and eight types of amino acids that are essential in sustaining human life. It's said to suppress a uh, rise of cholesterol, reduce the risk of getting various cancers, and help generate uh, substances that increase antioxidants that fight aging, and et cetera. So yeah, it's, it's just like, I think you should Google it like to um, know more about like the benefits of miso, and um, you, can, you can talk about it like on the menu and then you know, kind of, sort of educate your customers with it. And before uh, we talk about, I think uh, what ramen, uh, miso ramen is. I think I think for some of you, I, I think many of you like know what ramen soup is, but like I think you know we should talk about like what ramen is like. So ramen soups like consists of like three components. So base broth. Um, but that's made of like pork bones, for example, like chicken, uh, seafood, some kind of clam, like uh, some dry fish, vegetables, and others, and then oil. Uh, so vegetable, like for example, vegetable, garlic, leek, chili, like seafood, animal types of oil, and other other types of like ingredients that are used to make these oils. So basically, like oil, like adds aroma, like smell, like flavor. To the ramen soup, and this broth is basically like blunt, like you know, it's got like really good um, essence of like pork ingredients, pork broth, uh, chicken broth, seafood broth, but by itself like it doesn't, it's it's blunt, like it's not it doesn't um, have like much taste uh, per se. But motodare, that's that's like a base sauce, which which is uh, basically like a three basic types like miso. Show you and shio. So this like motodari is like what uh, adds the uh, taste and flavor uh, to the uh, base broth and sort of like completes the ramen soup. So um, so today like we are talking about miso, but like um, the next week we are talking about uh, shoyu, and then the in the week after next week like we are covering uh, shio. So like we're going to be covering uh, three base ramen types uh, this month. So, so what's miso ramen, right? Uh, so miso ramen, um, so the most famous miso ramen, maybe like Sapporo miso ramen, 
just was developed by the owner of like Bistro in Sapporo City, Hokkaido in 1955. So in Hokkaido, the standard ramen was tonko to show you. This was a mainstream, but this guy added miso paste instead of show you to tonko's broth. Since then, um, there's been many ramen shops serving variations of miso ramen. And now there are so many miso ramen shops that are famous for their miso ramen. And like a Sumire is the name of ramen shop. That's that's probably the most famous um, ramen, Sapporo miso ramen shop um, in Japan. And there are many uh, others like that are trending, uh, that new ones. Um, it's like they are spicy, like hot miso ramen shops that um, are trending like Hikambo, like Nakamoto and others. And there are also like many other like regional ramen, regional uh, miso ramen shops, which feature different types of locally produced miso. Um, they come with toppings, side dishes, etc., that go well with uh, each miso soup, which makes them unique. So by blending different types of miso, it's fun to create a unique taste and flavor. And miso is something that goes well with so many ingredients that's, that is like, it's very versatile seasoning. Um, this is why miso is like one of the basic uh, ramen types. And I came across like at the other day, like uh, some ramen shows like developed um, miso ramen that's, you know, that you by using uh, angular fish flavor. And it just sounds great. Like it just sounds like tastes very good. Like, you know, just, just think about like just angular fish liver with miso. That's, uh, you know, that's that sounds already good. So it's, uh, it's very uh, easy to work with, like, and then it's very, you know, you can go really deep, like, in developing, like, unique um, miso ramen soup of products. Okay, talking about um, so noodles that are suitable for ramen, uh, miso ramen, and uh, we use this uh, uh, chart to describe different types of um, uh, ramen noodles and different types of noodles. And basically, the uh, horizontal line um, represents the, represents the uh, so how much water is contained in noodles. So less water, the harder the noodle texture. Uh, vertical line uh, is protein content with flour that's used to make these noodles. Um, then the on the right side, we have like noodle size, and then like vertically. Uh, starting from uh, top, like that's 1.0 millimeter, down to like 5.0 millimeter. And looking at the particular uh, type of noodles, like that's on the left top corner, like that says like Hakata ramen, that's in green circle. That's that's low in protein content, high moisture content. And that's high in like uh, protein content flour. So that's, that's hard noodle for the, for the size. That's 1.1 millimeter and 1.3 millimeter. So that's thin, hard noodle. And for yellow, big yellow circle, like that says like tsukemen, the dipping noodles, that's high in uh, hydration ratio, like moisture content, uh, but low in uh, protein content flour. So that's soft noodle, but like for this noodle size, it's between like 1.5 to like 3.0. So like that's thick noodle, like so that's thick and soft noodles. And so you could, you could have like noodles that are like thick and hard, but it's, it's not going to be a good combination for noodle texture. Like it's just going to be hard to eat. So you see the pattern here. Like, so like it's either like thin or hard, or like thick and soft, or like, you know, somewhere in between. For the miso ramen though, um, it's relatively high in moisture content and then low in uh, protein content of flour. So that's that's a relatively soft noodle, and then for the size, that's 1.5 and like uh, two, almost like two millimeter. So that's that's like relatively thick, like so it's relatively soft, and thick noodle. So talking about the ingredients and maybe the most imp important ingredients for uh, miso ramen noodles is uh, wheat flour. And there are three uh, values that you should consider like when trying to find a good flour for uh, miso ramen noodles. And one of them is like protein. Protein we already talked about, that's hardness. So higher the protein, the harder the noodle texture. And then we said that, so 
the miso ramen noodle is like really, really soft. So the hardness and the, the protein is about like maybe around like 11%, like 10%. And ash, ash is that, um, it's like basically how much minerals is contained in the flour. And then basically the higher the ash, the darker the color, the stronger the flavor of the wheat. And uh, typically like uh, uh, miso ramen noodles, like especially like Sapporo miso ramen noodles, typically the color is uh, bright yellow. And um, people people care about that color, and then um, so if if you but if you use like a flour with a high ash content, then you end up like making like you know noodles that are like dark yellow color. So if you care about the color, like you should use the flour with the low ash content. Um, viscosity is uh, how much how how elastic noodle becomes like so. Um, the higher the uh, viscosity, the, the more elastic the noodles. And, um, but this value is not shown in the product label, so you have to test it on a special device. And um, yeah, and then like you see, if you have flour that you want to test it for this value, um, you can send us some sample, uh, then we can test it for you because we have it here. You have the machine here tested. So three things, like protein, ash, the viscosity that you should uh, remember uh, for a uh, good flour for um, miso ramen noodles. And the water is, of course, important. Uh, and the type of water we use is uh, soft water, soft water. Soft water means um, there's not much minerals like contained in the water. Um, so minerals being like magnesium, like calcium. And um, when cooking, like, uh, for example, noodles, like, like you know making broth like you know pork bones or something and um so like mummy of like all these like ingredients um to cook it um to you know for for these like ingredients to be like they need to like get out of noodles or like you know get out of like bones to the cooking water um but like if we cook them like a hot water like there are already like a lot of like minerals like uh, um in it so um, there's less room for um, these ingredients of umami to be released, right? So um, it takes time. Um, when it takes time to cook, for example, noodles, um, the surface of noodle melts, which affects the uh, the noodle texture badly. And uh, if you cook it for a long time, then we you know lose the noodles in cooking water. So it basically they dissolve in the cooking water, so it melts, and so. Uh, we, the, the yield of the cooked noodles is not great uh, when cooked in hot water. So it's it's not, then like when think about like cooking for a long time, maybe like um, cooking the same noodle like in soft water, maybe like two minutes, or like in the hard water, maybe four minutes, right, twice. And think about like you know, how much more money you have to spend on gas, like labor. And if you have to like keep doing that for like one year, like two years, so um, if you have to work with the hot water, then you should uh, get a softener, which should be uh, inexpensive and easy to install at your restaurant. And uh, talking about water, um, of course, like for miso ramen noodles um, that we talked about, like it's relatively high in hydration ratio. Um, maybe it's in the range of like maybe 30, 35% to like maybe up to like 40%. Um, so hydration ratio, like so higher, so it's, it's makes it soft, right? It makes the noodle texture soft. And uh, hydration ratio, like maybe 40% means that's so like if you are doing like, for example, like 10 kilograms of flour batch, that's a batch, right? And then um, 40% means you know, you're adding like four kilograms of uh, liquid to it, like including water. Um, so that's, that's what the like 40% hydration ratio means. So you end up like um, making like 14 kilograms of dough. Uh, that's 40% hydration ratio. Uh, the <clears throat> the other ingredients we have like called ramen noodles, like that's kansui. So kansui is something you need to have like for uh, your noodles to be called ramen, um, to definition of ramen noodles. And there are many vari many variations like kansui that are used in the industry, but um, the basic types that you be used 
um, the potassium is a combination of potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate. Um, uh, potassium carbonate uh, basically it hardens the noodle texture, um, it changes the noodle color to yellow, and it has a stronger constant smell, which uh, many people will find it like unpleasant. Um, the sodium carbonate uh, has exactly the opposite characteristics. So it softens the noodle texture, less coloring, uh, less constant smell. And we basically blend these at different ratios for um, different noodle sizes. So if you remember the chart that we talked about, um, it's like if it's for thin noodle, they, we want to make it harder. Uh, for like thicker noodle, like we want to make it softer for the, the better texture. So for thin noodle, like we increase the amount of potassium carbonate. For the thick noodle, we uh, increase the amount of sodium carbonate to make it softer. So that's 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 a country. And then these are this is like so ingredient wheat flour, uh, water, and country. These three things are the basic um, ingredients you have to have for ramen noodles, minced ramen noodles. Um, and talking about like getting the right noodle texture for miso ramen noodles. Uh, so miso ramen noodles like typically like it's it's curly like wavy and they're relatively thick. Uh, firm and yellow, the color yellow, and um, so this is a um, this is the exact uh, recipe that we are gonna do for uh, the you know production ramen uh, miso ramen noodles uh, today. Um, but like for the solid ingredients, we have flour with the protein of like 11 percent, ash like 0.34 percent. That's really low. Ash and gluten. So gluten is um, it's a pure extract of gluten that makes the noodle texture harder. So we add a little bit of it, like 1%, and egg white. Egg white is, um, yeah, it uh, kind of like, it helps the, um, the noodles retain its texture, like longer and hot soup. So if you want to keep the noodle texture like longer and hot soup, like you add a little bit of it, like just 1% to the weight of flour. Liquid, so 38% is the hydration ratio. Um, so inside 38%, we have like water, 35.2%, calcium, 1.5%, salt, 1% to the weight of flour, pigment, 0.3%. So these three ingredients are dissolved in the water before we add it to the flour in the mixing. For the, for the size, noodle size, uh, so width, that's 1.7 millimeter, and thickness, 1.5 millimeter, and then we make them uh, wavy, curly. So production processes uh, of uh, miso ramen noodles, and this slide just uh, kind of describes like how we uh, make dough. And um, the most important part of like on this uh, pro production processes is that like the, the number zero, like weighing of ingredients, right ratios. And we weigh each ingredient like by weight, uh, you know, grams, like kilograms, uh, pound, and uh, we don't we don't go by volume because um, you know, the weighing of ingredients is like a more precise. So we want to produce the same quality like over and over. Like we have to have like consistency of the quality. So um, we always go by weight. And um, mixing. So like we add like solid and liquid ingredients and mix it in the mixer. And then uh, it's. So um, in the mixing process, like so, what's happening inside mixer is that like it's it's the phenomenon called like agitation granulation process, and so each flour grain like kind of come together and like kind of um, to create like kind of crumbles of flour as it's mixed with the uh, liquid, and then so over time like it just kind of the crumbles like gets bigger and bigger, and then that's what what's that's what's what's happening inside mixer, and uh, so in the process like we are trying to build like. Yeah, good uh, web-like gluten structure. That's that's shown the image on the uh, top right corner. Um, and then uh, after that, we uh, put the dough in the plastic bag and then let it sit at room temperature. Um, we we call this process like resting process. And um, so that that's that kind of helps um, build the like good gluten structure inside the dough. For the rest of the process, like uh, I'm gonna explain, like when we actually make uh, noodles on the ramen machine.
And so after like we make dough, um, you know, all we have to do is just thin it, fill into the final thickness and cut it and portion it and then rest it again. Uh, so like after we make noodles, um, we put them in a container and then like put it in a fridge. And then uh, the noodles are um, kind of kind of dry over time and like lose moisture. And then the color gets translucent and then uh, the texture becomes tighter. So that, that's the third uh, resting process and cooking and boiling. Um, so this is the noodle making process. And again, like the, getting the right noodle texture. Um, so the shape of the noodles like is also important. And um, so like the shape, what I mean by that is like the width and thickness. Um, so thickness, like so it's standard size, like standard shape is like width is always bigger than thickness. And because like um, the, the, the boil, like boiling water, like soup, like kind of gets absorbed from the, the cut surface, the noodles. Uh, so that's like rough surface of the noodles. And then that's where the like um, boiling water and like soup com comes in. Um, and then, so the noodles get sort of like, sh like shrunken and then like, after the noodles are cooked, um, the, the shape of the noodle becomes like, you know, that, uh, the square with like, uh, with like four size dented. And that's where like that, uh, that's where the, the noodles um, kind of like hold the broth, like on the dents. So uh, that's why like, that's the standard size of the shape of the noodles. And then, but if you have like um, the reverse cut noodles, like and we, we actually did in the last, class, um, the width is bigger, like thickness larger, um, like it has a larger uh, cut surface. So it absorbs like more water, like faster. And uh, the, after it's cooked, like it becomes like kind of brown shaped, uh, kind of, and which is not that uh, good good for uh, the, as a noodle texture, but like, um, yeah, so the, but there's a type of noodle that's like reverse cut noodles. So just like think about like what kind of noodle texture like you want your you want your like customers to you know experience and like you know when you are making um, when you're making like thinking about like creating like, recipes and like um, the size of the noodles. Um, before I go like I just wanna touch a little bit on like kind of profitability of like homemade noodles. Um, so if you're a restaurant like you have a you know, options, two options, like, you know, buy noodles and make noodles yourself. And then uh, maybe like price of like buying like one serving noodles, maybe like around like 50 cents and like, but like cost of uh, making noodles, uh, like around 20 cents, including labor costs, like ingredient costs, like UGD costs. Um, so you're looking at like maybe 50 to like 60% saving. And, and not only that, like you're making, well, like unique products that, um, that like make you yourself like a standout like from other restaurants and uh, you know you, could, you have a total control basically uh, to um, you know put it like creating ingredients you want like and you want to you know you can make um, healthy products uh, the new, unique noodles that like you know one else is offering um, so there's a lot of benefits like you know doing uh, homemade noodles. Um, so before I go out of these slides, I, I just want to like kind of touch on because like we've been doing this like online class like for a while, but like, you know, um, bad thing about like doing this class is that like, you know, I, I we, we can like let you guys try, uh, noodles or like, you know, um, the whatever ramen, or, like udon uh, dishes that we, um, make during this class. And then, but you know, we, we want to like, we, we, we We'll try to like make our best to um, try our best to like kind of make them available for you. Uh, so we have like three locations: Singapore, New York, uh, Amsterdam, Holland. And um, if uh, you if you're interested, um, you know we want to make these uh, noodles available to you. So and then if you are kind of located nearby, um, let us know like if you're interested in like kind of like checking out the uh, private demo and um, you know make fresh noodles there and then like uh, that the kind of noodles that you're interested in and uh, 
you know, you can take them home, like try them. And uh, so we'll, we'll want to, you know, try our best to make them available to you guys. So if you're interested, yes, um, please contact us for more information. Okay, and uh, I think we're ready to start making noodles. And um, so first, uh, so we have ingredients and this is a flour that we talked about, right? And then, um, so this kind of, uh, kind of brownish powder is that that's gluten gluten that's a gluten powder and then this is the egg white powder uh, in Japan we use um, eggs in powder form but if you don't have access to it like you can just use fresh eggs but you have to treat it as uh, more as liquid than the solid so water um, and then salt um, that's one percent and Kansi. So Kansi, this one is um, potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, that's 60%, 40%, 1.5% um, to the weight of flour. And then uh, this is the pigment, 0.3%. So these need to be dissolved in the water before we add it to the flour, the mixing. So, um, so this is the machine we have, uh, which is like Richmond One machine. Um, the, this particular model you're looking at is a C certified. Um, so for, um, so EU countries, um, you know, they require all products being imported to their countries to have this uh, safety standard like C mark and this machine has been tested, evaluated, and then modified to uh, be certified for C mark. Um, so, yes, so this is C mark. Um, so, this is like ready to be shipped to um, EU countries. And, like, in fact, like we have a lot of customers using this machine in um, EU countries. So, now we are dissolving the um, salt. And fancy, and it's fancy, and uh, pigment, the water. So it's important that you need to like dissolve all these ingredients thoroughly, thoroughly before you add it to the flour. So in mixing process, um, we're just adding the, this liquid and uh, adding liquid onto uh, this mixer lid, which has uh, small holes. And the liquid uh, drip through the holes to, to be added to the flour a little by little. The reason we are doing this, doing it this way is that like, because we don't want to add like all the liquid at once. Uh, otherwise, like, you know, we're going to have, like, uh, some part of the flour that's, like, a lot wetter than the other parts. But, like, you know, the, the purpose of, like, uh, good mixing, like, good mixing means that, like, good hydration, good hydration flour. So um, we want to have, like, we, we want to add, like, liquid a little by little to the flour as we, as it mixes it, as we, as it's mixed. So, um and then total mixing time is 10 minutes, um, but we, we can't wait for uh, we can't wait 10 minutes uh, for the mixer mixing to be done. So um, so make me uh, prepared uh, the dough beforehand, and as you saw, uh, it was in a plastic bag, right? So that's how we uh, rest it after mixing. That's how we rest it. Like so, we put it in a plastic bag. And then let it sit at room temperature for uh, that was about an hour. And so now she's feeding it to the roller. So this much has a set of rollers that um, you can control with this uh, wheel. And um, by like one tenth a millimeter. And uh, 
So initial wall gap that she set is 1.5 millimeter. So she's making a rough sheet of dough that's 1.5 millimeter in thickness. So as you can see, the dough is pretty very yellow. Um, so this is the kind of color that like maybe like people would expect like when they order uh, you know Sapporo miso ramen. And um, if you if you add like eggs, um, I think I think it wouldn't bring out this this bright yellow color. And um, and if, if you're using flour that has probably like higher um, ash content, as we talked about, um, the, the color will be like darker yellow. So you you should have um, proper uh, ingredients to um, make make these noodles. So this hydration ratio, uh, we talk about like that's 38%, and um, the mixing time is uh, 10 minutes. And but like if you go over like 40% hydration ratio, then like the mixing time may be like like five minutes. So basically, like higher the hydration ratio, like more water you add, the shorter the mixing time, shorter you should mix. And um, for example, like Hakata ramen noodles, that's like um, like low hydration ratio noodles. Um, the total mixing time is like 15 minutes. So the less water, the longer you have to mix. So she's adding the rest of the water liquid and then set the timer for another six minutes. So total mixing time is 10 minutes. And she continues on the, uh, the sheeting. And the roller gap that she set is was like 1.5 millimeter. And um, so after the first like sheeting, um, the dough that came out like is still it's still like pretty rough, like uh, still pretty weak. And um, if you're here and then like kind of pull it pull it sideways, um, it easily rips. Um, but you know we want to make it harder, like we want to make it firm. Um, so we. What we are doing now is like we are separating it into two sheets and then uh, combining combining them through the rollers. And uh, she set the roller gap to two millimeter, two, 2.0 millimeter. And the reason for that is, um, so it was like 1.5 millimeter each. And then we are combining them. And uh, so that's 1.5 plus 1.5 millimeters. So like the equivalent of like three millimeter dough that's going in to the roller, right? And um, if it were like 1.5 millimeter roller gap, then that that's too too much, too too tight. That that would like um, damage the like gluten structure inside the dough. But you know we want to apply like this good good amount of pressure to like kind of develop like develop the gluten structure and. Um, so we, we apply this rule like called like 70% rule, and uh, so you just um, multiply the reduce the the roller gap like thickness by 70%. So that was like three millimeter um, thickness dough that's going into the roller, 
and um, we reduce it by 70%, so three times um, 0.7, 70%, and then 2.1 millimeter, but like, you know, just, just make it simple, like brought it down to 2.0 millimeter. So now it's going like to two two millimeter roller gap, and uh, and next round um, we usually do this um, compounding process like twice one one time to twice like depending on the recipe of the noodles. Um, like for the second time um, that was like two millimeter, and then like we, again we're like we are separating it into two sheets, and so. Each sheet is uh, two millimeter, supposedly like two millimeter in thickness, and like we compound compounding them, and it's so, like two plus two four millimeter equivalent. The dough is like going through the roller. So again, like 70% roll, um, uh, four plus times like 0.7, like 2.8, and uh, round it up to 3.0 millimeter. So she set the roll gap to like three millimeter. So, so after the dough comes out, and um, up to this point, like we wanted to, we wanted to uh, stick, combine the dough together, right? But like from this point on, we uh, we don't want the dough, the, the sheet of dough, uh, to stick together. So we uh, start dusting on the dough sheet. Um, so we turn on the uh, automatic duster, and um, and of course uh, the more water the noodle contains, the more you have to dust to keep it from sticking. So you can control the like dusting dusting volume. And so after like after second combining process, um, so we you know the the dough itself like is complete. Um, the gluten structure is well developed. So all we have to do is just thin it, just thin it. So again, like applying a 70% rule. Uh, so that's like three three times 0.7, 2.1, rounded down to 2.0. Um, so that's we set that roll gap to two millimeter. And this type of uh, noodles is considered uh, medium hydration ratio noodles. Um, and uh, high hydration ratio noodles, like over 40% hydration ratio. Um, that's that's like a tsuke man or like dipping noodles. We did it in the other class. And like so, some other um, types of noodles like uh, udon or like um, soba noodles. And uh, so in that case, like we had to dust more because it's easy. They're gonna be, they'd be like easy, easier to stick and Low hydration ratio noodles, like less than 30%. Um, Hakata style ramen noodles, tonkotsu ramen noodles. Uh, they, we, we probably don't have to dust 
feels like they are they're pretty dry and um, you know, and um, now she's uh, measuring the actual thickness and then um, after it came out like two millimeter roll gap that's that's like 2.7 millimeter uh, so actual thickness is that uh, bigger always because it um, it um, bounces back like after it's gone through the roller gap the rollers and uh, so there's a difference of like 0.7 millimeter and um, so we so we uh, we uh, roll it again like uh, 1.5 millimeter So next round, um, we are we're going to cut we're going to cut the dough sheet into um, noodle strands, and um, <clears throat> and then uh, like so, miso ramen noodles uh, they're typically typically um, relatively thick um, and then curly, and uh, how thick they are it would be like. Uh, like 1.5 millimeter and like to maybe like two millimeter, um, they are relatively thick. And so the noodle texture wise, um, they need to be like um, uh, soft, softer side, and then it should be chewy. And let's uh, measure the actual thickness again. Uh, so after it's gone through like 1.5 millimeter, now it's like 2.1 ish. And so there's a 0.6 millimeter difference. Um, to, so to get to the final thickness, that's 1.5. Um, you know, we, we expect that to bounce back by like 0.6. So we set the roller gap to like 0.9. So after it's going through like 0.9 millimeter roller gap, you know, we expect it um, to expand by 0.6. So 0.9 plus 0.6, 1.5. So the final thickness should be 1.5 millimeter. So the kind of cutter we use is this um, kind of kind of like slitter cutter, so that like dough sheet uh, should dough like go through between these. Um, rollers like kind of slitters and then like um, the dough comes out the other side and like uh, we, we because we won't make them curly like we set uh, these kind of pots that are like kind of silicone plates and uh, it's like a dough um, and, like noodles like stuck in the between the silicone plates and um, they they get like kind of squeezed out and then in the process um, they uh, become uh, curly. And you can control like how curly you want them to be um, by adjusting the position of the uh, parts. So we so we are cutting it and so we use this kind of like a low chair um, you can sit on and you know when you uh, catch the uh, noodles and um, so we set the uh, machine to uh, cutter mode from roller mode uh, to start cutting and. Let's start. So noodles are coming out, and the noodles, because like they're curly, um, they sort of like are stuck in the between the um, silicone plates, like 
a while and before they come out. So um, it takes a bit of time for the noodles to come out. But um, as you can see, like the noodles are like very cold, cold like wavy, and you you can make them lighter. You can make them uh, the like so like like wavier. Um, it's very easy. Like just you can just add, like adjust the position of the parts, and um, and then you can also like control the, uh, the portion size, like serving size. Well, it's kind of like hard to like kind of like um, uh, show you guys uh, in these like cold uh, noodles, but like basically you can just touch the uh, this like length, the volume length, um, length volume, and then um, really easy like to so, like make it shorter to make the portion size like bigger. Um, Make it shorter to uh, make the post side like smaller, so it's very easy. Yeah, so that's that's how um, that's how like ram like miso ramen noodles are made, and it's it's very it's very easy. So I think depending on the type of uh, miso ramen, uh, the like maybe the size I and mean the coldness of the noodles are different, like different a little bit. So um, depending on the type of broth like you're using, like depending on the type of like tare or uh, miso you're using, um, you want to adjust like hydration ratio, like noodle size, and then maybe like even the coldness, coldness, like waviness of the noodles. Um, That's how like um, ramen, uh, miso ramen noodles are made from scratch, the ramen machine. And so we can now um, move to uh, our kitchen where um, our school instructor is waiting. And um, for us to move, uh, we need a bit of time uh, to prepare. Um, so uh, while we are preparing, uh, I just want to say the uh, um, so, so like, um, yes, yeah, like still like under the situation of the COVID-19, like, you know, it's, it's like still hard, um, for, uh, us to visit our customers in, uh, their countries and like, it's hard, uh, for our customers to visit us. Um, but like, you know, we hope that like, well, things are going to improve like pretty soon and like, you know, we'll, we can visit, um, easily, um, you know, each other and like, but before that happens, like, you know, we started doing this kind of online classes, like free online classes um, on different subjects, you know, like ram, various types of ram, ramen noodles, uh, udon noodles, uh, and soba, like pasta, maybe even like, and then even like some, some like items like gyoza that are like pretty essential for like a ramen restaurant. And so uh, we keep doing this kind of class and more and more frequently. So if, um, some of you guys like interested in like this kind of class, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, um, let's, uh, please do that. And, uh, so let's, uh, move to our kitchen. Okay, so this is our kitchen, and um, so usually, like we have when we have like classes here, um, we have like up to like eight students, and we limit the number of students to eight because you know we have to have like kind of like one-on-one session. Um, you know, it's better for us to be able like kind of accommodate like uh, more to um, you know each student's needs requests. So um, basically, like how our noodle uh, school like work is that like you know we because like each student had like his or her own like uh, ideas like for what kind of ramen like what kind of udon they want to serve. So uh, we basically like, help them reach their own recipes from scratch. So like 
um, we have we have everything like we have like induction cookers like bigger ones like um, ten of them. So each induction cooker is like be cooking like different ingredients in individually like in the pots, right? And then we're gonna be we're gonna have like tens of like uh, different types like motodari like we talked about and uh, flavored oil we talked about like we make them from scratch and then um, so students each student ha can have like kind of like you know lab like you know uh, um, where they can play around like different ingredients different components to reach their own like uh, ramen recipes like udon recipes and so that's that's what, like what we provide and uh, so basically like um, we we can we teach the basics. We also like teach how to apply these basics and principles to um, uh, create uh, your own um, bowl ramen or like udon. So I I you know we hope that like you know you you guys will like uh, join us like pretty soon for our ramen school like udon school in Kagawa or like in Tokyo or even in Singapore. And um, so today we have uh, two instructors. And um, first, uh, Mr. Ikeda. Mr. Ikeda is like uh, has strong background in Chinese cuisine, and in, uh, he re uh, joined us well, well, like several years ago and been teaching um, udon school and ramen school in Kagawa headquarters. And uh, because he has like um, you know background in Chinese cuisine, which is like related to like um, ramen, and uh, so um, he. Let's say he could uh, like teach like you know such things as like items like you know gyoza as well, like, which is like pretty essential part of um, you know ramen cuisine. So um, yeah, for those of you like who are interested in, like starting up like ramen uh, restaurants, um, please feel free to like uh, send us uh, send him like questions. And uh, so thank you, Mr. Keda. Um, Mr. Takeuchi, uh, so he's um, from uh, Vancouver, Canada, and so like he's a native speaker in English, and uh, so and he has a, a background in Japanese cuisine, and um, we're lucky to have him um, kind of teaching um, you know this class, and then like he's going to show us the uh, uh, two examples of like Miss Ramen, uh, and uh, so I'll I'll just and he's going to take it from here, so uh, I'll pass it to him. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Akira. Uh, once again, this is Thomas from Yamato Ramen School. Um, I want to talk about miso ramen today. And before talking about miso ramen, I want to talk about the miso itself. Uh, so miso is made with soybean, grain, some sort of grain, salt, and koji mold. So this is the key to miso because this koji mold is a fermentation starter. So by mixing these four ingredients and letting it rest for a certain period, it becomes miso. Now that miso is explained, I want to talk about the types of miso. The first type of miso is rice miso. This is the most common type of miso in Japan. And obviously, the mixture will be soybean, rice, salt, and koji mold. And there are two different types of rice miso. One is red miso, and another one is white miso. And the difference is the amount of soybean and rice. So red miso, darker color, has more soybean, and white miso has more rice. Okay. And the example is right here. This is white miso, and this is red miso. Okay. And the red miso usually has a stronger miso flavor, and it's a little bit sour and saltier. And the white miso is usually more mild and sweeter. And it's easier to eat, the white miso. And the second type is barley miso. Obviously, barley miso 
the ingredients will be soybean, barley, salt, and koji mold. And number three, soybean miso is going to be just soybean, salt, and koji mold. And lastly, mixed miso is just a mixture of these about, about three. Okay. And now that types of miso is explained, I want to talk about how to choose your miso. So when you're choosing your miso, one way is to choose by the color. So if you uh, darker color miso usually has a stronger miso flavor. Uh, it just has a uniqueer, unique taste to it, and it's a little bit sour, saltier. And lighter color miso usually they're usually milder and a little bit sweeter. So if you're not used to miso, go for the lighter color. And when you want a stronger miso flavor, just go for the darker miso. Okay, so now that miso is explained, I want to talk about the miso ramen. Okay, ramen soup is made with broth mixed with flavoring sauce. This seasons the broth and flavored oils added for the aroma. So ramen soup is usually a mixture of these three elements. So for miso ramen, the broth is usually pork broth or chicken broth. It can be any kind of broth, but uh, these two are the most common type of uh, broth used for miso ramen. And second one, flavoring sauce. So the flavoring sauce is a mixture of all sorts of uh, seasoning. Um, there's all sorts of uh, ingredients, so most ramen shops, they usually keep their motodare flavoring sauce recipe secret because that makes up their ramen taste. And for miso ramen, it can be a red miso-based motodare, or it can be white miso-based motodare, or it can be spicy miso motodare. And obviously, the spicy mo miso motodare is the uh, motodare for spicy miso ramen. Okay. And next, flavored oil. So miso ramen, flavored oil will be, it's usually uh, pork fat, and it can be flavored with garlic, ginger, or leek. It can be anything. But in general, miso ramen uses pork fat for the flavored oil. Okay, next. The noodles, uh, for miso ramen, they usually use uh, thick, wavy noodles. These thick, wavy noodles, uh, they have a unique uh, texture. And usually that waviness, it picks up the soup more, so the soup and the noodles pair up nicer. And for the toppings, uh, toppings can be anything. But miso ramen usually has a, a lot of vegetables in miso ramen. So personally, I think miso ramen is one of the healthier choice of ramen because it has more vegetables in it. And some of the common uh, ingredients are chashu, cabbage, carrots, bean sprouts, garlic, leek, green onion, and butter. And it can be anything. This is just um, some examples of uh, toppings for miso ramen. And next, I want to talk about the types of miso ramen. And one group of, uh, so I can break up the types of miso ramen into two groups. One group will be regional miso ramen. So what this means is uh, miso ramen made with specific types of miso. So when miso ramen made with Sapporo miso, it becomes Sapporo miso ramen. And miso ramen made with Sendai miso, it becomes Sendai miso ramen. Okay, so that's one group, regional miso ramen. And the second group is miso ramen plus special ingredients. So when spicy ingredients are mixed with the miso ramen, it becomes spicy miso ramen. And when shrimp is mixed with the miso ramen, it becomes shrimp miso ramen. So there's all sorts of miso ramen, but you can break up into two groups. And today we will be making two different types of miso ramen. One will be Sapporo miso ramen, 
and the second one will be spicy miso ramen. Okay, so let's actually uh, make the miso ramen. And before getting into the cooking part, I want to talk about how there's two different ways of finishing off your miso ramen. One way is to mix the broth and the flavoring sauce in the pan and pour it into the bowl. Or the second way is to mix the flavoring sauce and the broth in the bowl. So there's two different ways of making it. And we'll make the Sapporo miso ramen in the pan and spicy miso ramen in the bowl. Okay. So first, I want to make the Sapporo miso ramen. So I want to talk about all the parts of this miso ramen. First of all, this is the miso motodare. There's about 10, 15 types of ingredients in here. And the recipe, you can uh, learn it at our ramen school. So if you're interested. And for miso motodare, because it's a, uh, like we usually uh, use ice cream scooper. Okay. And this is the flavored oil made with pork fat and it's flavored with garlic. Okay. And for the toppings, we have cabbage. Carrots, bean sprouts, corn, butter, leek, soft boiled egg, and chashu, and some seaweed. Okay, so let's actually start cooking the miso ramen. So we're going to start off with boiling the noodles. So we're going to use these wavy miso ramen noodles. We're going to cook these for two minutes and a half. Make sure the boiling machine is rapidly boiling. And when you put in the noodles for the five or ten for the first five or ten seconds, make sure to mix and start the timer. Okay. While the noodles are cooking, we're going to start off. Start preparing the topping and the broth. So I'm going to heat up the pan. One scoop of this lard, pork fat. And put this cabbage, carrots, bee sprouts into the pan. I'm going to cook these uh, vegetables. And I'm going to lightly season these uh, vegetables with salt and pepper. And once the vegetables are half cooked, I'm going to pour in this pork stock, pork broth. And one scoop of this miso motodare. And mix the miso motodare with the broth. And Sapporo miso ramen is usually uh, prepared in a pan like this. And first cook the vegetables and pour in the broth and then miso motodare. Okay. So this is how to prepare the Sapporo miso ramen soup and toppings. The noodles are almost ready. Okay. 
So make sure to strain out the water completely. And for Sapporo miso ramen, uh, usually put the noodles into the bowl first and then pour in the soup. Because usually most types of ramen, you have the broth in the bowl and then you put the boiled noodles into the bowl. But for Sapporo miso ramen, noodles goes into the bowl first. and pour in the soup. I like to pour in the soup first and then use a tong to put the vegetables in the middle. Put some pork chashu. and soft boiled egg in the back. I'm going to put some corn on the side. And top it with some thinly sliced leek. And another unique characteristic of Sapporo Miso Ramen, you put some butter. And lastly, I'm going to put some thinly sliced chili pepper on top for some red. So this is how to prepare your Sapporo Miso Ramen. Sorry, I forgot to put the seaweed in the back. I'm going to put two sheets of this uh, seaweed. Make sure there's a shiny side and the rough side. So make sure the shiny side is facing the customer. I'm just going to slide it in in the back. So this is how to prepare your Sapporo style miso ramen. Okay, next we're going to make the spicy miso ramen. So the first thing I want to always First, you have to boil the noodles. So I'm going to use a thicker one. Uh, this one's cut with uh, number 16 cutter. Let's use these. Mix for the fir first, uh, mix for the first five or ten seconds, and start the timer. And we're going to cook these for three minutes. So now I want to uh, prepare the topping for the spicy miso ramen. I'm going to make some uh, spicy bean sprouts. So pour in a scoop of this lard. Bean sprouts. And I'm going to season the bean sprouts with salt and pepper. And some chili pepper. Good. So that should be good enough. I want to keep the bean sprouts uh, still crunchy, so that should be good enough. Okay, let's prepare the flavoring sauce for the miso ramen. Because it's spicy miso ramen, we're going to use a uh, spicy miso motodare. Okay, so I'm going to put one scoop of this spicy miso motodare. and one scoop of this pork broth.
Let's use a whisk to mix the motodare and the broth together. And the noodles should be ready soon. Okay, noodles are ready. Make sure to strain out the water completely. This water is going to dilute the soup, so completely move the boiling water completely. Okay, put the noodles into the bowl. Okay, for the toppings, spicy bean sprouts in the middle. Try not to overcook the bean sprouts, it's going to be too soggy. And pork chashu, soft boiled egg in the back, and some grilled uh, baby corn, gives a nice texture. And for the green, uh, thinly sliced green onion. And I'm going to top it with some thinly sliced chili pepper. And lastly, most important, chili oil. Okay. I'm just going to wipe the side. So this is how to prepare your spicy miso ramen. And Sapporo miso ramen on the side. Ooh, seaweed. Just loosen. Okay, so we have a question, how to make the noodles uh, translucent, so a little bit. Um, when you want to make your noodles translucent, um, you want to bring the hydration level higher. So ramen noodles, you can make with the noodles with 25% um, low as a 25% hydration level to up to 45% hydration level. But when you have higher hydration level, that means more water into the noodles. Usually makes the uh, noodles a little bit more clear and translucent. And also, if you age your noodles, that allows the noodles to be a little bit more uh, translucent as well. So at least, so after you make your noodles, after you make your noodles, um, just store it in the fridge. Make sure you cover it so it doesn't dry up. You cover it and let it age for at least three days and that's going to make the noodles a little bit more translucent. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Uh, please make a class for Hakata noodles. Uh, we'll try to do that. And um, second question, I want to learn how to make the chicken broth. So making the chicken broth, it can take up to eight hours. So doing that live stream is a little bit difficult. So if you're interested, please um, consider a ramen school. And the second uh, another question, what region is the spicy ramen noodles from? Um, I'm not quite sure where it started from. I don't think that there's like a specific region for the spicy miso ramen. So it's just rather, I think it just started from a certain uh, ramen shop. I'm not quite sure where it started from. Okay, so that's about it. So that's about it from my side. So I'm going to pass it back to Akira.
Okay, thank you, Thomas. That was great. Um, so uh, for those of you like who are like serious about like learning about like ramen, like udon, uh, soba, um, you know, it's like under the situation like with like ongoing situation with COVID-19, like it's been like very difficult. Like, it's still difficult for us to like for you guys to travel to us, like, you know, to take classes like in person, like physically. So, um, but like we have, we, we do actually have like some of the textbooks um, that are available for sale. And if you're interested, um, please check out our website. And we have like some books like on ramen soup, like you no know, noodles, um, udon noodles and other, other topics. So if you're serious about it, like, you know, check them out uh, on our website. And um, so it's very exciting to announce that like, you know, we are um, well doing the uh, online noodle, uh, ramen classes, free ramen classes on uh, um, next week on shoyu ramen. And the week after that on shio ramen. So these are two basic types that we are doing. And then that's great that we had a question about like request for um, doing like Hakata ramen noodles. Like that's one of the, uh, like, um, I guess like another like basic, um, you know, uh, ramen types that's, uh, that's very popular. And so thank you for that, um, the uh, suggestion. Um, we'll definitely consider doing it uh, in the near future. And uh, so thank you so much for watching us today and joining us. And uh, we'll, um, and then for those of you like who have like subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, please do that today. And, um, and then, you know, we are going to be like um, streaming and we're going to be like uh, posting like more and more videos that are, um, that are useful for our customers like restaurants, um, for those of you like who are, you know, starting up uh, noodle businesses like restaurant businesses. And um, so please do that today. And um, Paul, and I thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll, uh, we hope to see you guys in the next class. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.